will go on when your two minutes is, has begun, the yellow light when you're, there are 30 seconds left, and the red light when your time has expired. I'm going to ask you to, at that point, end your comments um, because I think most of these folks are very supportive of this idea. Uh, Councilman Reed, do you want to make a comment? Yes, I just want to add that anybody hasn't seen it, the memorandum that the mayor and I uh, issued recommending approval of this is there are copies of it available on the table by the door. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll read off three speakers at a time, and if you could line up uh, right here uh, behind the, the main podium, that would be helpful. I have Sharon Sweeney, Tom Leonard, and then uh, Janet Hill, or Hit. Can't read your handwriting. So if we all line up, we'll going. Welcome, ma'am. You have two minutes. Good afternoon, Mayor Gonzalez and members of the council. I'm Sharon Sweeney. I'm a director of the Aero Club of, the, of Northern California, and we have several other board members here today. These and other speakers are some of the people who witnessed the history we are honoring today. The Aero Club's mission is to inform the public of aviation and space flight. Our mission is also to honor those who make outstanding contributions to the advancement of aviation and space flight, particularly lifetime achievements by local and California innovators. Tomorrow, our nation and the world will celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Wright Brothers' first powered flight. That celebration will remind us that the past century has been shaped by the men and women who got us off the ground. Ernie Renzel and Jim Nissen got San Jose off the ground. Amid all the changes we've seen at our airport, amid all the celebrations, the groundbreakings and runway dedications, it is easy to lose sight of Renzel's and Nissan's pioneering spirit. Their visions built our airport. My only regret is that Jane Nissen, Jim's daughter, is no longer with us today. She passed away a week ago, uh, and she worked with me on this issue. On behalf of the Aero Club of Northern California, I urge you to recognize these two fine gentlemen by naming Mineta San Jose International Airport airfield for Ernie Renzel and the new terminal for James M. Nissen. We also urge you to, to develop a public outreach program that will include our region's aviation, art, and history, as well as the history of many other unique individuals and events that shape San Jose. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Tom Leonard, uh, Janet Hitt, um, Janet Hitt, David Bowers, Welcome, sir. You have two minutes. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to speak today. I guess one of my tenets would be that where we have outstanding local individuals that have really contributed to the development of this whole area, we need to recognize their achievement. And where we can, put their name on something that they really built on their own. Just a, a quick comment. I came here in 1946 from far away San Francisco and had an opportunity to watch what happened. Now, immediately I learned of Ernie Renzel's efforts early on to develop an airport where the airport is today. We had King Road Airport. San Jose State, where I spent many years prior to retirement, used that airport. Small airport, not potential uh, downstream. We had the beginning of Reed Hillview, and then prior to that, we also had one out on Allen Rock Boulevard. No way could these airports meet the requirements of this community. Ernie Renzel was the guy that saw where something should be done and stepped forward to do it. Along in 1946, he brought Jim Nissen into the picture. Now, Jim, a unique individual. Ernie was a Stanford grad. Uh, Jim was a mechanical engineer from the University of California. These are, these are sharp guys who know something. Jim took the flying side, flew for the Navy, flew for Pan American, flew for NASA as a test pilot, was interested in aviation in every direction, started out 
flying gliders as a kid that he built over in the uh, Livermore area. So aviation was his life and death. Jim worked with Ernie and along came the airport. They tied up property. Ernie's dollars and Ernie's business capability took one side of this coin. The other side was Jim with the aviation expertise. We see what they've done today and I trust that they'll be recognized for it. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Janet Hitt, uh, David Bowers, and then Jennifer Renzel. Welcome, ma'am. You have two minutes. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Janet Hitt. I have spent 57 years as a pilot, a flight instructor, and a retired FAA inspector, which is why I can be here today. Um, I came to know Jim Nissen in 1969. I came here to start over again from working in different parts of the country for 23 years as a pilot and a flight instructor. And I was really impressed by this airport. This is an extraordinary airport. It is today an airport of excellence. It was at that point uh, an airport I had never experienced before. It was one that was both highly professional and people friendly. This is very hard to achieve. And then I had the pleasure of meeting Jim Nissen and I understood it perfectly. His leadership was quiet steady, understated, but this was a man of vision and his background in aviation was so extraordinary that um, he mastered the art of the possible at a time when both aviation and this community was experiencing explosive growth. I would like to offer to you that would be appropriate tribute to Jim and to what he has done for San Jose and for the International Airport to name the terminal after him. I didn't have the pleasure of knowing Ernie, but aviation, and I will tell you that the job of airport manager is one of the most difficult jobs in aviation. The public doesn't like airplanes flying over their heads. The public wants their airplanes on time and immediately available, and aviation is always an ongoing project. Anything technology is constant growth. You have to live with the present and prepare for the future. And Jim was a master at both. Thank you. Thank you. All right, David Bowers, Jennifer Renzel, and then uh, Jerry Bennett. Welcome, sir. You have two minutes. Uh, Mayor Gonzalez and Council members, my name is David Bowers, and I'm appearing on behalf of the uh, James Nissen family in order to manifest their support and approval of the uh, resolution by the Aero Club to name the airline passenger terminal complex the James M. Nissen Terminal. Uh, the family has also asked me to con convey their thanks and appreciation to all those who have supported this endeavor. As you know and already been told, Jim's oldest daughter recently died. She was the person who was going to make a presentation to you, and I'm trying to fill her shoes. Um, the Aero Club's resolution, if you've read that, gives you an overview of Jim Nissen's aviation experience. Uh, a man who flew uh, PBYs in the Navy, clipper ships, uh, Pan American clipper ships across the Pacific. A man who during World War II was a test pilot for uh, uh, North uh, American aviation, uh, testing P-51 airplanes and, and uh, the, a new uh, type airplane called the jet airplane. Uh, Jim uh, had an opportunity uh, after the end of the war to uh, become the chief test pilot for Northrop, uh, uh, or North American Aviation, I should say. He bypassed that opportunity and the large salary that went with it to come to San Jose and try to fulfill his dream to build an airport. He started the San Jose airport uh, from its grassroots by leasing some ground from the city of San Jose, 16.4 acres, that I understand now is way in excess of 1,000 acres. Jim was an environmentalist, so in addition to his flying background and his administrative uh, background, he was an environmentalist who brought <laughs> with him those skills and he tried to solve environmental problems, so he became concerned about the noise factors at the airport, so he developed uh, steeper uh, rates of descent by air, incoming aircraft to lessen the noise uh, felt by residents. He also installed the first 
uh, noise monitoring devices in the nation uh, at the San, San Jose Airport. So I would urge you to commemorate his uh, achievements and, and uh, contributions to the community by naming the uh, uh, passenger terminal the James M. Nissen terminal. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer Renzel, Jerry Bennett, and then John McMains. Welcome, ma'am. You have two minutes. Mayor Gonzalez and members of the council, first of all, thank you for moving this up on the agenda. We all appreciate that. I'm Jennifer Renzel. I'm honored to represent my dad, Ernie Renzel, and my family. My sister and brother are here as well today. Our father, now 96, unfortunately could not attend for health reasons. We want to thank the council for considering the airport resolutions today during this 100th anniversary of flight, powered flight. It's a wonderful time to reflect on San Jose's own aviation and airport history. We are very pleased that in the future you may be considering incorporating local aviation history into the design of the new terminal. With appropriate input, these exhibits could inspire future generations and, and also ongoing civic pride. We're also delighted today that you're considering honoring Jim Nissen. Dad has always said that Jim was instrumental in the success of the airport. We are deeply saddened by Jane Nissen's death, and it now seems more important than ever that that resolution regarding her father go forward. Jane and her, her family are certainly in our thoughts today. Dad and Jim Nissen were a great team. Dad provided the political leadership and Jim the operational leadership, which moved the airport from an idea into reality. It must be remembered that commercial aviation was in its infancy in the 30s and 40s when they were working on this. Most people could not yet imagine, and even today it's difficult, the huge impact that commercial aviation had or would have on our lives. Dad and Jim Nissen had that vision and knew how important the airport would be to San Jose. Dad served the airport on his own time over four decades. Basically, he helped identify the airport site, he negotiated the purchase, and he spearheaded the voter tax measure to fund it. As mayor in the 40s, he also shepherd, shepherded the airport's development in that critical time. And later, he also served on the airport commission. Dad is deeply honored that you are considering recognizing him with the naming of the airfield. This would be a wonderful culmination to a lifetime of civic contribution. Our family also would be particularly grateful if it turns out that our father might enjoy this lasting tribute during his lifetime. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Jerry Bennett, John McMains, and then Noel Thibault. Welcome, sir. You have two minutes. Mr. Mayor and members of the City Council, my name is Jerry Bennett. I'm honored to speak before you today regarding two individuals, Ernie Renzel and Jim Nissen, who had the vision to create an airport for the city of San Jose. I spent 35 years on the front line at the airport working for the city, serving 20 years as the airport deputy director in charge of managing the airport day-to-day -day operations until my retirement in 1996. You might say I have qualifications to speak before you regarding the two items you must uh, review today. The history of the airport actually dates back to approximately 1938-39 time frame when Ernie Renzel, a local San Jose wholesale grocer, civic leader, and past mayor of San Jose, developed the initiative for a city airport site. Subsequently, he identified the site for the city as known, as city airport as known as the Stockton Ranch, which was owned by the Crocker Family Trust, better known as the Crocker Bank Dynasty. Ernie Ranzel negotiated on behalf of the city the purchase of approximately 483 acres at the price of $350,000, or $725 an acre. With the clouds of war looming on the horizon, the airport effort had to be put on hold. By 1945, a renowned research test pilot at NACA Ames Moffett Field by the name of Jim Nissen presented Ernie Renzel and the city a proposal for a one-year lease with a one-year option to create an airport on site in the name of the city. It was in 1945 when Mr. Nissen graded off a field of cauliflower and established a 2,600-foot runway. With this very humble beginning, San Jose Airport was born. Before the end of Jim Nissen's second year lease, the city assumed operation of the airport and selected Jim Nissen as the manager with a starting salary of $403 a month. His first year budget was $17,000. 30 years later, at the time of his retirement, Jim Nissen and the city of San Jose had a 1,000-acre airport 
that consisted of three parallel runways, one of which was 9,000 feet in length, a modern air terminal with 14 commercial gates, serving 7 million passengers annually, was nonstop coast-to-coast -coast service and service to Hawaii. The span, in the span of 30 years, the airport had become the Bay Area's third major commercial jet port, the Bay Area's second busiest jet port. Jerry. The airport had completed $42 million noise and land acquisition program, better known as the Coleman Loop, and a five-year, $50 million noise attenuation program was underway. Over the years, I have always been impressed with the reverence Jim Nissen and Ernie Rizzo had for one another. Each was quite quick to give the other credit for the airport. Having spent half of my 35 years at the airport working for Jim Nissen and being in the company of Ernie Rizzo, I can assure you, you that having a new terminal named in his honor of Jim Nissen, the airfield, Ernie Renzel Field, as a just tribute to these two men Thank you. who had the vision, fortitude, human spirit required to create and develop a commercial airport okay. for the city. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm going to ask everybody else to try to make up some time here, okay? So I, I, I don't want to predict the vote here, but I really don't think anyone up here is going to vote against this. So uh, John McMaines, uh, Noel Thibault, and then Harry Farrell, welcome, sir. Mr. Mayor and Council Members, thank you for allowing me to speak. My name is John McMaines, and I'm Chairman of Wings.